you can't stop the people outside, the opinions they have. To go on the social media, to write comments and to speak about, yeah, he was bad, he was shit, and I hope your kids are dead tomorrow, your wife, come on, man. The most difficult period in my life. I never speak about this, but maybe today is the time. I want to have a better relationship with the people outside, with the fans. To be closer with them. We never meet them, we never have a conversation with them. They are only seeing us on the pitch, 90 minutes, and goodbye. They don't know how we trained before, they don't know how we feel, they don't know if we have problems in your family, they don't know if... A lot of points. After the season, I have still two years' contract here. I will give everything until I am in this football club. I always say that. I didn't sign a new contract only to be here for... enjoy my, my time and that's it. No, no, I want to achieve something with this club, something special. And before that, I don't leave. There are so many points that the people don't understand or they don't want to understand. Because they're saying, yeah, you earn a lot of money and... But money is not everything. Before you speak about someone, you have to know him. Don't speak about someone you see him in front of the TV, or you see him in the 90 minutes on the pitch, or... someone else. If you start to be famous, if you start to have money, the people see you in a different eyes. But they see only 90 minutes, the people are saying now, yeah, but it's your job and you get money and yeah, 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 everything is good. But if some, someone dies in your family, how do you feel? You, your wife, she has a, born a baby today and you have to travel tomorrow to Baku to play the final. Is it easy? No, it's not. For me, it's not easy. Family for me is a key word. I think I had a very good childhood, um, a lot of fun, had great time with my brother because we're, we are very close together. And yeah, if I go back, it was a nice part of my life. I was pushing him, he was pushing me, but everyone knew I have not the talent what he has. So uh, the coaches we speak today with the under 14, 15, 16 coaches when he was in Basel, they're all surprised which way I am or I am today. So, because they always say to me, you will never be the professional guy. Maybe not so far, maybe you can play in Switzerland, like second division, something, but not so far. And this was my challenge. But for me, I'm not surprised about the chance I get because I was working hard for that. And I believe if you get a chance, you have to take it. And this is not luck for me. The biggest change for me was when I was 15, I had a big injury on my knee uh, with the ACL. So when I came back after eight months, oof, it was a disaster. Disaster in, I was scared to go in the duels. I, got, I was scared to play again. And I had a moment when it was a 50-50 ball. And then I felt it, okay, my knee is good. Stable, it's good. I can go again. But before that, I was like, I go or not, I go or not, I go or not. And with this mind to go and to play, you have no chance. It's like a poker. Or you go all in, or you leave it. And of course, now the people will say, yeah, but because of that, you are taking too many cards and stuff like this. But I really don't care, if I'm honest, because this is part of my life. This is me and this is part of, of football as well. I had too many people around me and saying, stop football, stop football. You can see yourself, what are you doing? It's a shame you are on the pitch and stuff like this. And one moment was a 50-50 ball. And I say to myself, listen, 
this is, the, this is the moment or take it or leave it. And I took it and from this moment was everything different. When I moved to Germany with 19, um, my six first month, so the first six months was a disaster. Um, I came to Germany to play, started to play the first five games and after that I was on the bench, I was not in the squad. And in January, I said to my dad, what we are doing here? We came to Germany, we left Switzerland to be on the, on the bench, not in the squad. I want to leave. And he said to me, shut up. This is not the way. You can walk away, he told me. There is a door, please. But to walk away, every, everyone does. But to be strong and to work more than the others is a difficulty. So my dad is like this. My brother plays Saturday, he's in Switzerland. He takes the flight and travels to London on Sunday to watch me, for example, and go back on Monday. So he will never miss a game. So my dad, I'm 29 today, yeah? he never ever said to me, you played good. Never ever. He always have something where I'm looking bad. So what he's doing is recording the game before he left the home. No, it's real because he was a coach as well. So he was coaching the, the, some teams in Switzerland. So it's not like he's speaking without knowing football. He knows about it. But he see maybe some other mistakes where I have to improve. And I told him once, and I remember like today, it was last, last season. I said to him, Daddy, why you never said to me you played good? Why? Why you always have to find something? And I told him, one day, I'm sure you will say that, because this is my challenge. My challenge is, one day when we are at home, my dad is telling to me, okay, today you was good. I think I'm a different person on the pitch and outside the pitch. People from outside think I'm very serious, you know, like serious, I never laugh, I never joke, but the people who know me, they know how I am. I like to joke, I like to have fun, I like to, to enjoy my time. But everything with a limit and everything with a respect. I'm not here to joke when I go to the training. I'm not here to, to enjoy my six years, seven years, eight years, 20 years in UK. I'm here to work. And when it's time to work, I want to work. When it's time to joke, I'm the first time there. I hate excuses and everyone does mistakes, but it's so easy to show to someone the finger and say, yeah, because of you or, no, no, no. It's first yourself. You can't stop the people outside, the opinions they have, what they're saying, what they're doing. Um, a lot of people think if they see me or they see my interviews or, or stuff like that, they think I'm very arrogant. I had a lot of people, they say to me, wow, you are surprising me now. I said to them, okay, and why? Because we were thinking you are totally different. Maybe I'm too open, too open to, to the other people, because the people take it in a different way, how I say it. You have to know with who you can be open and with not. Does that mean that you have to be careful with who you trust? Absolutely. So, how hard do you find it to trust people? Very hard. They are seeing us in a different way. Because we have money, because we have nice cars, we have big house, we have fame, we can travel where we want. But everything looks good from outside. But it's not everything like this. Because you have a lot of pressure. Sometimes after the game you don't sleep until 5, 6 o'clock in the morning. People know that? No, they don't care about you. The easiest way is to speak. To go on the social media, to write comments and to speak about, yeah, he was bad, he was shit, and I hope your kids are dead tomorrow, your wife is... Come on, man, where are we are living? What is this? Of course, when you decide to be a professional footballer, you have to to take it sometimes, but sometimes 
It's very hard. I always told myself and the, to the people they know me, you can criticize me. You can say to me, about me whatever you want. I have no doubts about it. But don't, don't touch my family because there is a limit. Because my little ones or my friends or my wife or my brother or my parents have nothing to do with me. Because I'm the guy I'm on the pitch, so speak about me, please. Since I had the problems with, uh, with the fans here, um, I changed completely my social media. When I lose, it's better not to look out. You know, a lot of people, I believe, they don't even see the game. They see only the result. And let's go, we catch one guy, two guys. And because I'm more or less always in the focus, of course, it's the easiest way to catch me. I will not change my, my, myself, my life, for a guy behind the computer, for example, or because he's getting money and he's speaking about me. Never ever. I want to be the people owners with me, how I am with them as well, with a lot of respect, and to see me like granite and not like a footballer. I never spoke about this, about my reaction. Never, with nobody. I had a lot of questions from friends, from family. I you think your reaction was right? You will do it again, the same? Tunnel up against Palace at home. And it drops here for Socrates! They draw 2-2. after <clears throat> the coach took me off, after 60, 65 minutes. But we, I was walking like two, three meters, first of all. They started. Some Arsenal fans actually cheering as they take off uh, their captain, Granit Xhaka, who looks rather unimpressed by being hauled off at this stage. And that is not a reaction that you should be getting from an Arsenal captain. Oh dear, it's getting worse for Granit Xhaka, he knows. The message is getting from the crowd, and where's the shirt going? That is Arsenal's captain. And Xhaka is away down the tunnel, booed by the Arsenal fans. Wow, that is not good at all. Big decision for him to take his captain off. Picture, I see a lot of hate from the people outside. But the most difficult thing was for my parents, I think, because they've been in the stadium, both of them. So for them to, to see that, to feel that, was maybe worse than I felt it. And this was the first time my dad said to me, it's time to go. And he will never say that to me, because I had a little bit pro problems, but I didn't play in Germany in the beginning. And he said to me to walk away, it's easy. But this time he said to me, it's time to go. From the stadium until home, you drive minimum 50 minutes, one hour. It was like, no words from nobody. A few minutes later, hours, came um, Hector, he called me, Bellerin, and Bernd Leno, at home, supporting me, and saying they will be behind me, doesn't matter what happens. It was a good feeling to have them there. Um, had some phone calls, of course, from Edu, and... But yeah, for me, the story was gone. I never had problems with the fans before. Um, I always say, of course, you have people, they love you more, more and less, they criticize you. Next, next game you are the best, next game you are the worst. This is part of, of football, this is normal. But to stand up one 
stadium against you, against your own player at home, this is, is not normal for me. I never see that before. And I hate to go through the, this tunnel after the game. Because the people are still sitting there. But if I'm honest, I don't look up when I go this moment. When I have this five to seven meters, my head is mostly down. And I know the people. So when I go after the game, I applaud the fans and stuff like this. I still know the people where they were sitting. I love the moment when we win and I can go through because I know nobody speaks. But when we lose, and I have to go to this small five to seven, eight meters, I hate it. What they want from me? To love them? Completely? No. I can't do it because I'm not fake. I'm real, how I grew up. And if someone did what happens, I said that before as well, we will be never best friends between each other. I get a lot of love as well. It's not like I get a lot of hate only. I know the people love me as well. Um, but in this moment, there was not love. Today, before that, of course, you get nice messages, you, you have good comments, the people they see, they see on the street, they come to you and speak with you and love you and respect you. But when we go back to this moment, it was a different story. The most difficult period or moment in my life. Because you see the hate. It's not like they don't like you, because it's different, or you see the hate in the face from other people. Do you ever still think about it? Of course, yeah. Of course. I don't I don't think so you can take it off completely. I was gone. I was gone, but my heart not. My heart was saying to me, you can't leave this football club like this. For me, it was not the time to give them yes. You want it, you got it. But this was not me. And why I came back, it's of course because of Mikel. To change my mind is very difficult. You need to have good words. But yeah, I had a two conversation with Mika when he came. So he wanted to hear the story for myself, not what happens outside. And I didn't know Mika before. Um, and I told him, my time is gone here. I don't want to be here anymore. I don't want to wear this shirt again. I can't. And he understand me completely. But he told me then how important I am for him and honest, straight, clear plans, cl clear idea. And I liked it. I liked how he, sp he spoke with me. I liked it, the, the, how warm he was with me. And the decision for me was huge. Mika told me as well to give him six months time and if after six months you're still not happy, you can leave. And I'm the first, I give you everything, you can leave. But I was happy. I was happy with him. Everything was going well. Um, I mean, I speak first with the family, with the management, because I had the contract on the table for another club. So it was only the signing was missing from my side. So and we was prepared to leave. So all the suitcases and stuff like this was ready. And after the second um, conversation with Mikkel, without speaking with nobody, I decided to stay. Yes, go on it. Come push. Sit, wait. For myself, I did a, a perfect decision to stay. Um, I don't know what happens if I said two years ago, I will leave. 
I know I don't know where I've been today. In which club, in which country. But the decision I did in this moment was absolutely the right decision to stay here and to turn the things how I want, not how the people want. I just cannot believe that we've reached a point that a group of fans think it's acceptable to abuse and to boo and to jeer their captain. <sighs> to be a captain in this football club today, I believe it's very difficult. So to be the captain between the club, the players and the fans have to be very close. So when I was a captain in Germany, in München Gladbach, I was very, very, very close with the fans, with the people, with the players, with the city. So you feel proud to have this, you feel like the people love you, though you feel like. Here is different, here is about game by game. You play one game, ah, oh, he's our captain. You play one bad game, ah, oh, he's so shit. Take him off and, why well, he's our captain and stuff like this, you know. So the decisions here are very quick. In Switzerland you make mistake. Happens. It's okay. Here you do a mistake. I believe and I think, and I'm maybe 100% sure, that here are players scared to make mistakes because of the people outside. Oh, oh. It's a red card for Granite, Xhaka! Oh, it's a penalty, 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 definitely. And what will happen here? It's a red card! It's not like I'm taking cards only in since I'm in UK. This was always my part of, of game. Since I'm a professional footballer, I always took cards. One more, one less. But this is part of my career. I'm a guy, I told you before, before we start to speak about this. Or I take it, or I leave it. And if it's a 50-50 ball, yeah, sometimes you come too late, sometimes it's okay. Sometimes I never took a... For me, not to have discipline is if you go to the elbow or you catch him. I did once, yes. It was wrong. And I'm the first guy I'm here and say, sorry guys. But because of the duels and you take a red, uh, red card or yellow card. Come on guys. It's football, it's not ballet. No, sorry. Yeah, it's, it's the reality. We are not playing ballet here. Yeah, why the other guys are not taking uh, yellow cards? Don't ask me. I speak about myself, not about the other players. It's a bad feeling because you let your teammates down, of course. But secondly, of course, when you're inside in the dressing room, you start to think about what is coming now. Because you know you will get smashed. Nobody say to me, in my face, grind your shit. What do you say instead? Ah, you are the best, you are good, you are stuff like this. I prefer to tell him in the face, grind today you played so bad. I prefer that and I will take it in a positive way. But I told you before, the people smile in the face or they put your knife in the back. Yeah, it's a decision where you have to take it now, make it now. You have no time to think. My red card against Liverpool was... <laughs> yeah. I saw the ball and in this moment, when the ball is coming through you, you make to have to make decision now. It's not time to think about it. But I did the wrong one. But because of this action, to tell me again bad things, it happened too often. What is too often? The question. He's taking every season two or three red cards. Yeah. So why are you still letting me play? 
because I'm a good guy, I'm looking good, or no, no, because I'm training hard. Every day, I'm in the training of the same guy like I'm in the game. I'm not like I'm going very soft in the training and I'm there and in the game. No, no, I'm training the same like I'm playing. The respect the guys are showing me day by day, um, the stuff is unbelievable. And I'm very proud of myself and thankful for them, what they give me. Um, try to help the, the young guys, try to help them with my, with my experience I had already. And um, I will give everything until I'm in this football club. I always say that. I love the comment from Mika Richards when he say, when Arsenal does something, everyone has to say something. And this is true, this is a reality. This is a reality. The other clubs are doing as well. The other players are doing as well. The other players are getting red cards and yellow cards and making mistakes. But none of them are a big story, like mine, for example.